This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we're going to talk about Amos's trip to Los Angeles. And work sucks. Uh, that is all. <laughs> work sucks. Completely, uh, yeah, completely unrelated, by the way. Yeah, and um, um, I, I watched the Evil Dead trilogy. Oh, that actually sounds pretty good. Speaking of the Evil Dead, I got a new camera. Uh, I don't see how that relates either. You know what else is not related to any of those things? We have a guest this week, Mark Jelinek. Yes, thank you. I am an international cosmeteorologic sensation. And that starts our show. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 217 for Thursday, the 20th of June, 2019. I'm Amos, uh, that's Kent, and we have Mark with us. And this, once again, we finally have a show that that grabs our our little subtitle and is able to be used without sounding awkward. This is a show where two lifelong guests and their friends celebrate all things geek. Yay! (laughs) Woo-hoo. It's not just the voices in our heads anymore. Well, really, my head, because Kent, Kent doesn't listen to the voices in his head. I definitely don't listen to the voices in your head. Yeah. <laughs> well, not since that one time they told you to shit on the salad bar at Wendy's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. We don't talk about that. Um, man, it's good to have you back. Um, and also, it's good to have you back on the show, Mark. It's been quite a while. How you been? I've been doing all right, I guess, relatively speaking. Um, yeah, you know, I was looking. The last time I was on was the day before I turned 50. So I'm old. Oh. Oh, Well, okay. Skype reminded uh, me that the last time I had called you on Skype from the Ritual Misery account was over a year ago. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, yep. almost two. Yeah. Yeah, it's been far too long. Um, um, so I'm really looking forward to our conversation tonight. Hey, uh, I have an update for you guys. Uh, last last time we spoke, I was saying how my retirement gift to myself was a kegerator, and I had a keg of Alaskan Amber ready to go to be put in that kegerator. And I can on a, I can show you now one of this is probably like the thirtieth glass of, of <laughs> Alaskan <Tonight>. Amber, <laughs> yeah, uh, huh. that I've pulled out of there. It is delicious. It is cold, and it is on tap here at the Original Misery Studios in Wasilla, Alaska. Come on by. That's awesome. Next time I'm north of the wall, I'm going to be sure to do that. You say next time, but have you ever been? <laughs> I've never been north of the wall. So He did. He went out in the backyard and climbed over the wall. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, actually, the, that, that's the taller wall, though, right? The wall in the north of your backyard? Because that'd be, if you step outside, that'd be the one to the left. Right. Well, the rest of my wall is just as tall as that now. So now, it's... yeah. <laughs> He's like, you know what? That, that that wall to the north is too tall. I need the others to be just as tall. Yeah, it, exactly. It keeps the wildlings out, so we're good. Is that what you call the neighbors? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the neighbors' children, aka the wildlings. Oh, that is awful. Uh, Mark, where are you right now? Because your 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 title says international cosmeteorological. Cosmeteor- sensation now we already know your sensation because we declared that last time and we already know you do uh, some some cosmo- cosmology in your in your spare time and <laughs> and you're a trained meteorologist so i, that, I can that, see where all right. that can, yeah I, I definitely work in pair yeah yeah well i mean that's that's because you work on your own uh bald head that's why you're so good because it's like one style psh, done good to go um the international part though has me confused what's going on with that Yeah, so I am in Santiago, Chile. So we are officially a worldwide podcast this evening. I'm I'm down. um, You know, I lived here for about I don't know, almost twelve years. Um, Not since you guys knew me, really, but uh, from about 2003 to 2015, um, my wife and I lived down here in Chile. So I'm down here dealing with some um, challenges. Let's say Um, we. Recently, uh, what it's been about three months ago now, my wife passed away uh, after dealing with cancer for a little over a year. And not only did I have the challenges of trying to deal with all that in one country, but considering we still had some things going on down here in Chile, um, down here just kind of taking care of business. So now right. that is both very cool and very tragic, uh, and I guess not in that order that you said them, but um. 
I, I, w- I want to talk to you about Chile because are you fluent in, in Spanish? Is the Spanish they speak there? Is that their primary language? It is. Because it's, it's either um, the choice it, of either Spanish or Portuguese, which are kind of the same thing to those of us that don't know any no. <laughs> no, you guys said that before, but they're really not. But, yeah, I, no. I mean, they're, to be they're, clear, they're Amos close. said that. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's blame I, Amos. I am defining but, myself as someone who doesn't know any better, so to me, they're kind of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. To to the uh, to the person who doesn't have to communicate with people in Brazil, yeah, that, that you'll be just fine. But everywhere except Brazil, for the most part, in South America, I'm not going to say that exclusively. The rest of it is Spanish, and uh, there's a whole history about that. That you know, if you want to learn about the Pope and him declaring who gets what between Portugal and Spain, but. Um, no, I'm not fluent in Spanish. My wife was, and my Spanish sucks. Um, I've got enough to get by. I could always get home. I could always get a drink. I could always find the bathroom. You know, key things in life. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but beyond that. Not necessarily um, in that the, order. Yeah, yeah, that's well, what I was going to say. I think it's the drink, the bathroom, and then home. At some point. <laughs> well, the drink and then bathroom, if the bathroom's bad enough, they'll send you home. <laughs> or just a tree. I mean, you don't necessarily need the bathroom. Um so, yeah, all my work, even when I was here, was still in English. So I never – I my wife kind of was the one who focused on the Spanish and was really good at it. But, uh, yeah, I got, again, I got enough to get by. But it's really different here. So they do drop the S quite a bit. So you don't – it's not like buenos dias. It's bueno dia or mm. mucha gracia. And, and it kind of throws you off if you're not ready for it. Um, mm. So, you know, it's kind of different even in its own right. Not exactly the Spanish you might hear in Mexico or countries like Colombia or even Spain. Nice. Mm. I, I love it when the, when a when a region just changes the entire language in you know, towards their dialect and like, something like that where they just you know what this is this is too much like we don't need it. Yeah. Um, uh, my my week has been uninteresting completely. Yeah. Uh, work sucks. Yes. Um, and. Well, and the, the thing that I'm I'm coming more and more uh, to, to grips with is that it's not my job that sucks. It's going to work that sucks. Are you talking about the traveling or just the fact that you have to work? Yeah, that that I have to be at a place at a scheduled time on a regular basis, not a place that I would choose to do, you know, go and, and things that I would do if I was just left to my own devices. Um, I'm really looking forward to true retirement. <laughs> then I can just do the things that I choose to do when I want to do them. Well, I, I can tell you that my current job, my current employment, does not have a scheduled time or place to be other than here at the house. But it's the days that I work, which is the key, right? Um, the days that I work are just as hectic because it's like this mad scramble of wait and then hurry up. It's mm. it's not much different than the military, except I get to wear sp- sweatpants and grow beard. Well, I mean that's that's something. I I call it the sweatpants tax, and I love it. So you're <laughs> you're talking about your current work. Uh, th- that current work took you to Los Angeles last week. It did. Last week I spent the week um, smooching and boozing with uh, uh, Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, Roger Chang, and most of all Jenny Jeffersonson. Um, and Richard Gunther even managed to swing out there for a couple of days and we had some, uh, some beers and we had, it was just a really good time. We recorded the final episode of let's talk about Thrones, which I have yet to publish because time sucks. And, um, we got some strategic lunches out of the way and we really, really spent uh, a lot of quality time with, uh, people that I've been working with and it's been really awesome. So um, I don't. I don't know if you released it, Kent, but the last week my little K episode was actually from DTNS Studios at Tom's house uh, with Rich Struffolino, and mm-hmm. we 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 were there for the recording of DTNS, and then also Tom's top fives, a couple of those, and a Tom versus Tom or Tom talks to Tom uh, <laughs> recording, and that was fun too. So just seeing how all that comes together, and I can verify that Tom's background is not a green screen. <laughs> at least the two okay. days I was there, it was not. It might be on a regular basis, but uh, seems like what a lot if of trouble. Took a photograph of his actual background, and then just when he does shows, he puts up a green screen, does the whole chroma key thing with the photo of his actual background. 
other than uh, uh, other than going against his uh, uh, design principle of simplicity in everything he does, um, I would not de- doubt the capability to do that. Right. Yeah. It'd be like expecting you to put forth a little extra effort on something. You're like, no, 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 that can't happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, you know a little bit about chroma key, I'm guessing, huh? No. Not no? a damn thing. Not a damn no. thing. Okay, so next no, topic. I, I, need, I, I need to do that. <laughs> now, I, you know, that's funny because I, I did my first Twitch stream, um, and I realized I need to get a chroma key so I can do background. I do know a thing or two about chroma key, obviously, with meteorology, but yeah. um, I didn't. I don't do that much or, or wasn't kind of an on-air personality. So uh, familiar with the concept, not actually using it all that much, though. Yeah. Uh, w. Scottis one says, I was paid by Tom to say that. And uh, it is true that the trip was <laughs> was um, paid for by Infinite Gain and DTNS. Uh, I was not actually paid any money, although... But did you, did you have a super sparkly day? Several, actually. <laughs> several. And I got to hear the... Hear why the super sparkly is a thing. And Kent, you probably have no idea what we're talking about, and that's fine. Not even a little bit. <laughs> that's right. Kent doesn't, uh, you know, bless his ears with the sounds of DTNS world. No, no. Uh, yeah, not. Yeah. All right, not we're, we're done with Kent. <laughs> just, just cut him off. He's, he's gone for the rest of the episode. We don't need him. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but uh, well, we did want to talk to him about the. Well, I tell you what, we'll leave him alone until we get to Evil Dead, because uh, I want to hear about his his experiences with that. Um, I have a little conundrum that uh, Kent's going to be sad he can't talk right now. Uh, I give a little conundrum uh, that that I found myself in. I have previously stated that I love this new toilet paper roll configuration where it's like a big roll and it comes out the middle and you just kind of pull what you need and usually tears off in singles. Um, I found a situation where sometimes it doesn't tear off at all and it just stays inside. Except I had already used the restroom because it was kind of an emergency. And all the toilet paper was inside the roll. So, Mark, what would you do in a situation like that? Well, I, I wouldn't end up in a situation like that. So um, <laughs> I, I guess I would pack some going in knowing that that might happen. I don't know. <laughs> what? what, what, what? What is this configuration? Where? How did you end up with this configuration? Uh, well, I was doing. Uh, I was taking pictures of a soccer game, and the uh, the need aroused to uh, use the restroom uh, to, to take. Well, that rest. could be a. There could be your first problem that you were aroused to use the the bathroom. Well, the so. situation was aroused. It was an excited situation. It was not my excitement that we're talking about here. Um, and I went. I actually, instead of using the porta potties, I went to the actual restroom at the park, which was a little bit out of the way. And in doing so, it just increased the urgency of me needing to go. And um, that worked out well until I looked over in the little toilet paper spindle. The toilet paper was actually stuck inside, and there was no way to grab it to pull it out. Yeah, yeah. So a lesson learned from living in Chile for many years, where you quite often have to pay to get toilet paper to go into the bathroom, is carry a little thing of Kleenex everywhere you go. If you're not at home, have a little thing of pocket Kleenex, period. So, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have this problem because I would have had stuff with me. Uh, so you're just shit out of luck. That's your problem. Uh, well, the problem, I, the problem is I was in deep shit uh, because yeah. it, like, oh, my God. So basically I couldn't get to the shit tickets. All right, I'm going to bring Kent back in here again. Uh, Kent, what would you do in this situation? Uh, you, you just took a nice, fresh, like, slide out your ass turd. <laughs> And uh, you got no shit tickets to available to you, man. I mean, there's not much to do here. I'm not going to clean myself with my bare hand. Um, I would just um, reclothe myself and make my way to the house. <laughs> I mean, there's I, I don't see many ways out of the situation. So that wasn't an option either, because uh, again, it was not the cleanest of shits, and. <laughs> This park that I was at is an hour and 20 minutes from the house with no traffic. So. Um, run to the women's room? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. 
ask for help. Yeah. Uh, Please, well, and, and see, there's the problem. It's a children's uh, soccer tournament, so there's nothing but a bunch of kids asking for help oh. in a bathroom mm. and hoping a kid isn't the one that answers you. I was like, <laughs> literally, oh, shit. <laughs> I thought about doing like a combat crawl to the stall underneath me. Then I was like, I'm not crawling on this floor. <laughs> but that did bring up that that did bring up the solution. The solution was in the stall next to me, which was empty. There was a very very long strip of toilet paper just laying on the floor. <laughs> And it, it didn't already have shit on it. It did right? not already have shit on it. It seemed clean other than the fact that one side of it was on the floor. Footprints, you know, random other stuff. There was no, no, no there was shit. No, there was none of that on there. Like it, it looked like somebody just torn it out and dropped it on the floor. So I, I used my foot to hope no, no, that didn't, wasn't sending the wrong signal and tapped on it <laughs> until it stuck to my shoe, brought it over to my stall flipped it in half so the dirty side was inside and used that. So was your backup plan to use your own shirt? I, well, my, <laughs> my, my backup plan was to do the absolute worst part of the scenario, and that is to, like Ken said, reclothe, go to the stall next door and try to find one with toilet paper, mm -hmm. knowing that that would exacerbate the, the cleanliness that would be required. Or just wipe with your underwear and go commando the rest of the time? I thought about that, too, but I was going to be there for another three hours, and it was already kind of sweaty. <laughs> so you were having a swass situation. Yeah, and, and I was wearing jeans, too, so... <laughs> like add, wet, add in the chafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah wet, uh, uh, sweat, wet denim, and balls don't mix. <laughs> and this isn't a park like it's just a park. It's actually a hiking park with different flat areas... Uh, uh, set out for soccer fields so it's not like it was yeah. just a quick walk it was like a a hike to get into any field and yeah that's that's the situation that i was in yeah that's so there's there's your conundrum for the day if you have yeah. a, a better solution than the one that we any of the ones we brought up or the especially the one that i used feel free to hit us on twitter at ritual misery r-i-t-u-a-l-m-i-s-e-r-y yeah I, th I think um sweaty ass is better than shitty ass but that's just me. It was, yeah. <laughs> uh, There's no good way out. That's all I'm saying. Uh, have you guys seen the Evil Dead trilogy? Uh, maybe, maybe you were like me for the longest time and had only seen Army of Darkness. I've seen Army of Darkness, but I was too drunk to remember it. And I saw uh, the first Evil Dead, like the was it the '78 version or whatever the. Um, 81 or something like that 82 something like that yeah sometime before my cognitive memory was fully formed and i cared to two, two shits about anything so yeah what about you mark mm -mm. as he takes a drink <laughs> i have i have not uh, yeah right right then um i shouldn't say i've not seen any of it i've seen you know parts of it on like hbo or something but no i've never watched a complete movie yeah so he, Evil Dead. Uh, okay, so the first two movies are are like straight up horror movies uh, with with some some dark comedy elements in them. Uh, but Army of Darkness is kind of one of those iconic nerd movies, uh, highly quotable. At least for uh, I don't know, Amos. Would you say? Would you even say like our generation or like our? Whatever. It's one of those things, you know, like, give me some sugar, baby, and stuff like that. Great. Now, I'm the uh, old fart on it's... the show. You know, Amy, <laughs> our generation. Yeah, I mean, it's not... It's Actually, not Mark, as... you are technically still part of the same generation we are. We are we are tail enders on the back of your generation, if anything. Yeah, you freeloaders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't equate Army of Darkness maybe as high as... Um, uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail, as far as like nerd quotable, uh, but it's I would say it's it's pretty high up there. And Lucas, my oldest son, uh, also my uh, like nerdy replica, uh, he's basically me in so many ways. Except uh, he's getting he, laid a lot more often, I think. Uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> we, don't do that. we don't do that comparison. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Is is Lucas home this evening? He is. No, we're can, not having can that we conversation. Him, it, it, no, no, no. He needs to come answer that question. 
<laughs> All right, I'll uh, see if I can get him here. Oh, no, but he's got yeah, his... Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the show stops now until we can get Lucas in the room and find out who's getting laid yeah. more. No, yeah, no, we, he's, we need to he know. can't come to the mic because he's getting laid right now. <laughs> so by default, he wins. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Because Kent's just got that all the porn on the 4K TV. Now I remember. That's right. <laughs> that's right, right. Oh, my gosh. Uh, no, but so, so he he was interested in, in the trilogy, the Evil Dead trilogy. He wanted to know what it was all wait, about. In wait, particular, wait, wait, Army wait, of Darkness, but wait, he didn't wait, want wait, to wait, jump wait. right into is that. This what he's, wanted... Is this what he's not getting laid that he's interested in the trilogy or while he's yeah, getting laid? It, on the rare occasions. That, I mean, that I he... mean, two totally different conversations, Kent. We must know. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we refu refuse to kink shame on this show, but I, would, I, I wouldn't mind kink exploring a little bit down that path. Oh, my God. <laughs> Perhaps on one drunken evening in the far flung future, I will have this conversation with him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, anyway, so he was interested in the trilogy. So I thought it would be cool to revisit it with him. I had actually never seen Evil Dead 2. Okay. I, like you, Amos, I had seen Army of Darkness first and then had seen Evil Dead at some point later. Uh, but But unlike you, I'd seen Army of Darkness like, I don't know, several dozen times. Look, you're one of those people that likes to watch those quotable movies, and I'm one of those people that likes to watch it to get context, but then can't remember the quotes to save his life, so fuck it, why do I need to watch it more multiple times? Right, gotcha. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I recommend this trilogy to anybody that likes, uh, well, horror for one, like Evil Dead is a horror classic, uh, but just like, I don't know, dark humor in that pops up in weird I don't know. If you like movies that are just a little bit off center, uh, but also like very well made and and um, just a good time, I recommend these. If you are someone who hates jump scares and doesn't like sustained gore, uh, yeah, steer clear of <laughs> Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. <laughs> Now, how do the how do this trilogy uh, match up to John Wick three as far as just sheer gore and death? Oh, there's way more death in John Wick three. That's <laughs> for sure. But I think the gore level in Evil Dead is way higher, <laughs> way higher than John Wick. That's awesome. Um, now, would you recommend watching them in the original order or in the order in which you watched them? Oh, totally. The original order. Evil, Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. Like, they flow together. They literally pick up at the moment that the last one left off. So it's it's a flow. So the next thing we're going to do is is watch the Stars series, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. There's three seasons of that, and um, yeah, we're, that's, that's our next watch. Nice. I just started watching... Um... Uh, what the hell is that show? Uh, Designated Survivor. It's a show where uh, Kiefer Sutherland plays the Secretary of Urban Development or Housing and Urban Urban Development, and he's designated as the one person in the cabinet not to go to the State of the Union. And then Congress wow. is blown up, and now Kiefer Sutherland is suddenly the president. And it's got some conspiracy. It's got some action. It's got some political intrigue. It's kind of like House of Cards meets 24, but not as serious as either of them. And I really enjoy it, and I don't know why, but I can't stop watching it. So Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah, my, where, where is that? Where, where can we find that? Um, it's on Netflix. First, these, first three seasons are on Netflix. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Mark, what was it called again? Uh, Designated Survivor. Designated Survivor. Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, it's it's interesting. It's got some. I, anytime somebody want, a TV show wants to take on, uh, uh con not congressional but constitutional issues and kind of play with them in a dr drama kind of way, I'm I'm game. I love constitutional intrigue. Yep. And D that's, Debbie Scott is one says so. Basically, if Ben Carson became president overnight or something, except Kiefer Sutherland plays. Okay. So first of all, Kiefer Sutherland would be better as president than Ben Carson. Second of all, he plays a character that's better at being president than Ben Carson would ever play a character or any variation thereof. 
So, <laughs> okay. Yes, so, uh, but Mark, way Mark, better. I'm going to quote. Uh, I'm going to quote Tom Merritt on Cord Killers. What have you had your eyeballs on? Apparently, Skype lag. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. Uh, see, there's the eyeball <laughs> right there. Um, in case you missed it, Mark, he, he asked what you had your eyeballs on. What have you been watching? You know, when you're in Chile, I, I don't get the same choices. Actually, I, I, I can tune into Netflix original. So I've been watching all the quality shows, you know, like Storage Wars and reruns of Two and a Half Men. Um, there are not a lot of good options down here. I, I mean... I'm thankful that there's anything in English. So, I, I mean, I get some things and they have HBO, so I catch some stuff. But um, I, I was reminded while I've been here why I ever wa started watching shows like Ancient Aliens and Storage Wars and stuff, because it's just on all the time down here. It's either that or infomercials or football, as in soccer mm. or TV I can't follow because it's in Spanish. So those are my choices. It, it is World Cup year this year, and my we've been we've been watching some games. It's been pretty interesting. I I really enjoy that high level of soccer. Um, I, it's kind of like the the playoffs for NBA. I'll, I'll watch NBA NBA playoffs or, or Stanley Cup playoffs, but the regular stuff don't care. Mm. Yeah, and I I grew up playing soccer, so I mean I enjoy it. Um, and Copa America is also going on, which is the big. Uh, kind of South American tournament that happens every so often. And so uh, Chile is in that. And actually, Chile was in the Women's World Cup, mm. and they won today, but they didn't win well enough to continue. So that was kind of a big downer for, and for the country who today. Who are they playing today? They play Thailand today. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't keep up enough on the team because so, I'm still fairly fresh and new in the professional soccer area. But I just find it really, really, really interesting to to see that level of game because some of the tackles that they do and things like that, it's really, it's really good. So um, I have to ask, Mark, you, you mentioned on here, uh, you climbed up Mary's backside. Yeah, I thought that might catch your attention. Yeah, that doesn't really jive with uh, with my concept of a, of a recent widower. So can you please elaborate, please, uh, in, yeah, this, in, the, in the mindset that I'm in? Yeah, so basically there is a... Santiago is kind of nestled in between the Andes and kind of a, a horseshoe comes around to a, a little bit of a interior set of I, tall hills. I mean, not really mountains, mm -hmm. but one of them is called Cerro San Cristobal. And on top of that is a statue of Mary. As you can imagine, most of uh, Latin America has heavy influence from the Catholic Church. So mm -hmm. on top of this one is... Uh, the Statue of Mary. And actually, the first time my wife and I climbed up it, we ended up on the other side of a fence from this statue. And so we had to scale the fence because it was the only direction we could go. And you literally were on the backside of Mary. Um, and so you were, you know, if you could look up her skirt, you just would be seeing Mary's behind. So this time <laughs> I've done it. I've actually done the hike a couple of times and I did it this weekend. And realized that, you know, all the time you track your what you're doing with phones or, or fitness things. For the la last three years or whenever since I've had tracking on any of my phones, this was the first time I crossed 22,000 steps or somewhere over 10 miles in one day um, that, you know, I actually had the device with me. So mm -hmm. um, I I've, I've crawled up her backside a couple more times while I've been down here. It's a good hike. Yeah, uh, it's just something to kind of get away. And, and it's Santiago kind of like L.A. has a smog problem, mm. particularly in the winter. But we've had some rain, which kind of cleared the air out. So it's it's a nice hike to go up and kind of get your mind free a little bit. And yeah, again, it's a little bit of a downer because I'm doing it by myself. But uh, it was a, a kind of a nice memory to be able to do that and you know think about the times my wife and I had here while I was while I was doing that. So that's awesome. Uh, have you have yeah. you figured out the proper way of going up Mary's uh, front side or is it? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you know, if on the you back want to take the road. You know, the normal people know how to go up her front side, um, but, you know, that, that just – it seems wrong. I, I kind of like going up her backside. You know, it's kind of like you in the porta potty right? You know, I, the only difference was I wasn't looking for toilet paper while I was climbing up Mary's backside. That's a good thing. That's, That's a good I mean, thing. fair point, fair point. I'm not going to dispute the uh, – because the size the sheets would have to be to clean Mary's backside, I don't know that they make rolls that big. 
<laughs> I'm sure somebody does. <laughs> hey, Amos, do you know what a bodega is? Um, uh, I thought I did until you asked, and now I'm doubting myself, so no. <laughs> okay, I, I really learned what a bodega was when I visited New York City, because they're, they're basically these, like, single-aisle uh, convenience stores, basically, uh, like in, a, in an urban environment. At least that's how I know of a bodega. Mark, is bodega the same thing in your vocabulary? <laughs> it is not. Unsurprisingly, no. <laughs> yeah, Kent, Kent's version of bodega, you know, Kent's world. You know, <laughs> okay. beer, beer that's never cold. His son's right, getting laid right. more than he is. Bodegas are, are places you eat food. None of the rest of us live in that world, but uh, but Ken does. So actually, bodegas just mean storage unit. And and yeah, in New York, it, it happens to be where they set up food shops or, or little mini marts. But no, well, it's, my bodega it's life accurate is, there because you don't have room for the food in your apartment. So it's kind of like right. your storage that's, unit. You know, you just haven't bought it yet. That's accurate. And actually, I, I, the one I have in the U.S. does have some food in it. And the one I have here has some bottles of wine. So I guess technically it does have some uh, consumable items. But no, the, the, the realization hit me I, when, after my wife passed away, you know, our lease was coming up in the U.S., so I kind of just moved out of the apartment. I've got lots of family in the area, so I'm just kind of splitting time between fam family houses, if you will, but here as well. So I'm down to storage units in both countries. So I literally no longer am renting an apartment or don't own a house or anything. So um, I am living out of bodegas. But yeah, I'm thinking that that's a way of life. I know that they can kick me out of the storage unit, but I'm thinking a little hot pot, you know, and uh, get set up with a little mini fridge in there. And then it'll be like Kent's bodega, right? So, you know, maybe that, that is what I'm going for. And you'll probably still get more laid more than Kent does. <laughs> right, right. Maybe not as much as his son, but, but more than Ken. Well, that, I mean, that's really the sweet area you're looking for is between those two extremes. <laughs> um, oh, my I, gosh. At, at one point, I deployed and, and took all my stuff and moved it into um, a storage unit and was surprised at how little space everything I owned would take. Uh, at, at first I had a, f a five by 10 and it was just a little too full for my liking. Like I couldn't retrieve anything. So I moved up to a 10 by 10 and suddenly I had this huge blank area in the middle of the floor <laughs> and everything I owned was, <laughs> was within those walls. Um, and I mean, I, I guess a few things were up, up at my house with the wife when she was in Missouri cause we were, she found a job up there. So we moved apart for a while, but like all the stuff that I consider like mine, this is my stuff, not our stuff, my stuff fit in probably like a eight by eight space. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, I've, I'm like 30 something years old. My entire life is accumulated to less than a storage unit. <laughs> it was not a happy yeah. time. <laughs> and, and when we were in Chile, so most of our household in the U S actually, we had a sizable unit. It was like 15 by 20 by about 20 feet tall. And it was packed to the gills. So mm. I've gone from doing that to where I'm down into about a meter cubed here. And in the U.S., I'm going to be in under a 10 by 10. Mm. So, you know, it's it is it's a big change. But, you know, again, that's also part of the process of, of trying to figure out what sticks with you and, um, you know, what you can what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep after a life event like that. And so, you know, going through that process as well has been been tricky at times. But um mm. Yeah, it's kind of something you got to do. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Kent, uh, is it about time we hit the little button in here? Oh, shit. I should probably load up the little button first. Uh, Kent, <laughs> stall for me because uh, this is going to get cut in the Man, version. I did not watch any movies in the theater this week, which is uh, a, somewhat of a rarity for me. It seems like every week I'm talking about what we had just seen in the theater. Uh, a couple of movies came out this week that I want to see, though. I want to see Men in Black International, and I want to see the new Shaft movie. Um, neither one of those did all that great, though, at the box office. Um, let, let's hear what Big Voice Jay has to say about the situation. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv, for the week of June 17th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Pro tip, eat your tacos over a tortilla. When the filling falls out, boom, another taco. Let's go to the scoreboard. 
Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in last place with $21.9 million. Team Game Night gets an $11 million shaft. And fifth place with $197.2 million. Team The Bod Squad gets $37 million from Men in Black International. And fourth place with $216.5 million. Team Ritual Misery gets third place with $489.9 million. Team Ever Drink is in second place with $772.2 million. And in first place with $1,212,000,000. It's Team Movie Party. That's your stream Team Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of June 19th, 2019. W. Scott is one is in the chat, and he is not real pleased about the situation because um, he's part of Team Game Night, mm. and Team Game Night has Shaft, and uh, Big Voice Jay said that they got the Shaft, which they kind of did with $11 million. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Kent, what movies do we have left? We have Spider-Man Far From Home oh, left. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, Spider-Man is going to make us some money. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be enough to get us to second place, though. We, yeah. we decided a long time ago that there's no way we can get to first. Yeah, yeah. First was out. out yeah, no. Yeah, not just <laughs> absolutely not happening. Uh, second place is Team Have a Drink and... They're out of movies. Right. So we so, have we have residuals, which will not amount to much of anything at all, and Spider-Man. Yeah. We've got to make close to $300 million to catch them. Right. Uh, come on, Spider-Man. <laughs> I've never been more excited to skip a Spider-Man movie in my entire life. Man, and Game <laughs> Night is pretty much done. Like, they, they didn't have a big shot. Uh, because of a, a, a Fitz <laughs> error that yeah. occurred during draft. Um, but they're pretty much done. Shaft is their last movie, and it doesn't look like that's going to make more than, like, I don't know, $15 million, probably. Yeah. It's, it's, Gosh, ba it's barely going to pay Samuel Jackson for a salary. Yeah, but right now, Drunk Kids Gaming is in last place. That is not going to go on much longer. They've got Child's Play and Toy Story 4 coming up. Toy Story 4 is going to make all the money this summer, I think. Um, they've also got The Lion King coming up later. They're they're going to be a threat to our position, I think, with, uh, with a couple of big movies like that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we really more need Spider-Man more to stave off them than to catch up to have drinks. So. Well, that's true, yeah. I, I, I'll... Say this again, I'm pretty confident in our third place positioning. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, hey, if you want to catch up on how third place does this year, you can cruise on over by uh, podcast. Uh, 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 what, what, Patreon.com slash ritual misery. Jeez, I'm going to get this wrong every time. Hey, uh, and I was just talking to Kent. Well, I told Kent what I want to do, and I think uh, I didn't hear a resounding uh, hell no. So it sounds like we're going to go ahead and go with it. And I got to tell you, this might be the perfect year to be a ritual misery patron. If you're not go on by there. Um, uh, I don't want to let too much out of the bag, but if you, uh, if you donate a dollar a month, you might get some, uh, some pretty decent swag. Uh, $3 a month would be the next tier. It sounds like some really good swag. 60 bucks a month is going to be some kick-ass swag. But if you're one of the people who has gone above and beyond and is willing to, to spend about 10 bucks a month on this show, keeping us going, keeping us live, uh, what was Brian Brush would say? Live, loud, and independent. There you go. I didn't want to quote him. And if you're willing to keep that going, uh, 10 bucks a month, you will be one of the few to get possibly the coolest swag I've ever thought of. So... <laughs> that's coming at the end of the year uh, you got until then and I might even start dishing some stuff out early if if uh, Kent and I can formalize and which probably won't happen until about March of next year so anyway Great. so uh, so wait 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 so what you're saying is that ten dollars a month these people will get fresh toilet paper from the stall next door uh it'll only be run on, on the floor once okay <laughs> yes. It's, I, I would say that it's probably something better than that because in a life or death emergency, this could be used as toilet paper. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. I don't no. think you would choose to do that. And also, uh, by the way, if we show up at our next live show and people start giving us toilet paper, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> pissed or... Never mind. Or, or, or pissed or just shitty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
But no, so over at patreon.com slash ritual misery, uh, show us that you give a fuck by giving a buck, and we will do our best to give you value in return for what you give to us. Uh, Amos has a really great idea for some swag that you're going to want. If you listen to this show, uh, you are going to want this swag. So get over there, uh, not to mention all of the exclusive interviews, mini shows, uh, post shows, pre shows, all, all sorts of goodness over there. Uh, so check it out. That's patreon.com slash ritual misery. You will never know. Seri- ser- seriously, people, if you've listened to more than one episode of this podcast, you need to go to patreon.com slash ritual misery and at least sign up for a month. It, hmm. it, at least a dollar a month. It, that's nothing. You can't get in and out of a bathroom these days without spending <laughs> at least a dollar. <laughs> So instead, bring your own toilet paper, take the dollar you saved, and go give it to these guys. They've been doing this for you know, years now, over 200 episodes. You've been entertained again and again and again. At some point, you need to support it. So go do it. If you're not laugh- laughing with us, we're at least laughing at us. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Thank, thank you for that uh, promotion, Mark. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, Amos, we've got a game. Uh, I've got a problem. Yes. I'm out of beer. No. Oh. Oh, do we need to take okay. a beer break? I could go get a beer. Now. Let's I, hit pause. I, I tell you what, I will race you guys. Oh, we're, we're not going to hit pause that, unless Skype cuts out. <laughs> so um, let's leave Skype on and let's all move out of the range of the cameras and get our own beers. We all need refills. I, I don't even have to. Well, I, I guess I kind of have to leave the range of the. Uh, oh, well, let's race. Who can get their beer the fastest? Go. I will sit here and entertain the crowd because I should have a fresh cold beer in my cooler. Uh, in case you did not watch the pre-show, I uh, made the mistake of not having any beer cold already in my fridge because I had to replenish my beer. And I put my beer in a cooler that had been sitting in the hot garage forever. Um so I was convinced just prior to going uh, into the episode to go fill my cooler with ice water. <laughs> so hopefully my beer is cold. All right. So our guests, our, our guests, our, our fellow co-hosts are back with their fresh cold beers. You weren't even so done with is. the first sentence and I had my fresh drafted beer. <laughs> All right. So Amos. We have a game. Oh, yeah. Um, the game thing. I got to hit the little button. Um, this one. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. I just thought of a new game. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to take it as a challenge to hit the button, go refresh my beer, and be back here before the stinger ends. Ah. That yeah, I bet you could. Uh, I bet you could beat that challenge. Uh, I'm gonna try next week. I wonder if you're gonna beat the challenge of this game that I came up for you guys. I call it whether or not, and it's spelled W E A T H E R. I'm gonna guess I'm not gonna win this, but let's go for sixty <laughs> percent. Well, the half of that is not. So not all of this is about weather. Right, that means I gotta get at least. Uh, oh, depend on, depend. On, I mean, uh, Mark's gonna go first because he's our guest, so we'll we'll let him. Cle- uh, clearly, you're gonna get the weather questions, and I'm gonna get the not. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a little it's a little random. So, your choices are. So, I'm gonna state a fact about a location. Your choices are only Alaska or Chile. Oh. So some of them deal with weather. Some of them do not. So, Mark, I'm going to read the first fact, and you are going to answer Alaska or Chile. 21.5% of this place's area is forested. Is this Alaska or Chile? Chile. It is indeed 
chilly. Alaska's forested area is actually 48%. Yep. Much higher. More than much twice higher. as much. Amos. Uh-huh. The lowest temperature ever recorded here is minus 79.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that Alaska or Chile? What is that in Celsius? Mark? Cold. <laughs> what is that in Celsius? <laughs> he said cold. <laughs> damn cold. I think the damn. answer is damn cold. I'm going to say Chile. You say Chile. No, it is Alaska. The coldest temperature recorded in Chile is around 27 degrees below zero. Uh, I was thinking some top of some mountain somewhere, but no, because I mean I've I've hit negative 40, I think 42. That is disgusting. That is vomit-inducing disgusting to me. That's why I have not been north of the wall. <laughs> All right, Mark. This place has over 5,000 islands belonging to it. Is that Alaska or Chile? Chile. It is indeed Chile. Alaska has a little over 2,700 islands belonging to it. Hmm. Amos. There are five there are yeah, there are five hundred active volcanoes here. Alaska. <laughs> That's chilly. Alaska has around hundred and thirty. I know nothing, Kent Floor. <laughs> <laughs> we know this. It is known. <laughs> it is known. It is known. <sighs> All right, Mark. Average snowfall here is 74 inches. This is annual. Average annual snowfall here is 74 inches. See, I have no idea because so, I've never... never so, 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 wait, so wait a minute. We're talking in the whole country of Chile averaged or the whole state of Alaska averaged? Uh, Just, sure. Yeah. I, uh, if you Google it, it's the data that comes up. So I don't know exactly how they, <laughs> what, how they, right, they measure right. it. Some random location in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico. <laughs> Zero. Got it. All right. So, um, so I'm going to say actually Chile. As far as I know, <laughs> because that is the, the, stat i found for alaska and i could not find any consistent data for chile so in other words i'm right and you just can't prove that i'm not right and so you hit the button that says i'm wrong (laughs) the the inconsistent data that i found was all far below 74 inches but but for where i'm (laughs) 74 inches Uh, for uh, just some random spot just just outside just outside valdez uh, in the past right there, they get like 10 I, feet a year. I think, yeah. the, I think how they did. Yeah, exactly. And I think the way they did this is probably, you know, take, you know, any location in that area and then average that and then average it per year. I don't know. I don't know. I did. I'm not the Great. statistician for very this. thorough questions and answers we've got here. That's good. That's good. All right. <laughs> Amos, the tallest mountain here. Reaches a height of 22,600. Alaska. You say Alaska. No. Amos, you're thinking of Denali, which is only 20,310 feet. At a height of 22,600 feet. You're really just splitting hairs at that point, aren't you? I mean, it's over 2,000 feet. Whatever. (laughs) Uh, Mark, do you know what mountain this would be referring to? Aconcagua, yeah, I could see it from where I'm at. So the uh, the name that I saw is is Ojos del Salado. Nah, that's that's not the tallest. <laughs> so, yeah, so somebody's been playing funny English names with Spanish names, and <laughs> yeah. now the tall the tallest mountain in South America is, is within eyeshot of of the buildings in Santiago. I mean, you can't see it from ground level, but you can see it from any building. All right. So triv- trivia about uh, Ojos del Salado, though. So I know what Ojos del means. That means eyes of the whatever. 
and I, I had to look up what salado means, and that that means salty. So it's like the salty eyes. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, your hey, uh, next... real quick, Kent. Thank you for saying Denali and not McKinley, because McKinley is a dumb fucking name. Yeah, Mount McKinley. Yes, I should have said that on purpose because I I knew that you didn't like. Mc... Yeah, I should have said that. Damn it. <laughs> It's Actually, one time. Ojos, uh, de, Ojos del Salado is the t- tallest volcano. It's actually not the tallest mountain. It's still taller than Denali. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or whatever it's called. Yeah, I mean, Mount McKinley. Mount whatever. Those Alaskans. Sheesh. <laughs> right. All right, Mark. This location has 6,640 miles of coastline. How many again? 6,640 miles. Hmm. Alaska. You say Alaska. So, oh, damn it. I would have gotten that one yes, too. It is Alaska. Chile has 2,653 miles of coastline. Still quite a bit. Hmm. I don't think I don't think I like your questions. <laughs> Amos, this is home to the world's largest seal colony, numbering over one million seals. Alaska. Finally, you get one more. Um, yes. Okay. Mark, your final fact. This place's name translates to Great Land. Alaska. I have no idea. Um, Yeah, by power of deduction, it's definitely not chilly. I don't think I like your answers, Mark. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you what, I won't answer anymore. Uh, Fine. I accept your truce. (laughs) <laughs> Amos, your final fact This place is visited by penguins Oh, that's definitely not Alaska That's definitely <laughs> Chile <laughs> All right Amos, you got two out of five, correct? <sighs> you You didn't even get the D I know, this time. I know Well, I mean, I can't always get the D <laughs> And Mark, you got four out of five, correct? Just wait, like wait, 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 wait. So, so there were ten questions, and we got six of them right. So we got the D! <laughs> hey, hey, Mark and I will like share the D. the D. We will share the D. <laughs> <laughs> Mark and Amos share the D. That sounds like a, that sounds like a title suggestion to me. <laughs> All right. Thank you for playing my game. That was fun. Uh, uh, I still don't think I like your questions or your answers. I like my reality. Because it randomly gets 74 inches of snow a year. I mean, 74 inches is something. Hey, it's my game. (laughs) Uh, I'll I'll I'll, I'll play the the Bryce card. It's science. I I scienced it in the computer. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) All right. um, What is next? Oh, uh, I want to to tell everybody that I got a new camera. Um, I was supposed to get a new lens. And the lens was already opened in the store. So I checked the other store. The other store's lens had already been opened also. So I just said, fuck it, and went ahead and bought a new camera. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you know, so you lens, went, camera, the, same thing. What, a $200 purchase to, a, what, $1,500 purchase? Sure. Yeah. you obviously not a photographer. Uh, we'll go with that. That sounds like a good answer. And the difference is roughly the same as the actual difference. So we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you didn't give any details about the type of lens versus the type of camera. So, oh, he's going to pull a Tom Merritt. He's got his camera. Yep. There it is. There it. Yep. Okay. And Looks what, like a DSLR. Wait, wait. It is not a, a. It is not a DSLR. All right. I have just revealed my complete lack of knowledge of cameras. <laughs> and and what is it, Amos? What's the model and the? It is a Canon EOS R. 
mirrorless oh. camera. He's gone mirrorless. Yep, and uh, it's it's really awesome for everything except except sports, which I already have a camera for that. So perfect. So this is where you take pictures and tell us you're going to put them on Facebook and put them on Instagram, and you do nothing of that, right? No, this is where I tell you I got a camera. I don't make any promises about my pictures, and then they randomly and sporadically show up when I fe fucking feel like it. So next year. <laughs> okay, so nothing has changed. Yeah, same, same old Amos. <laughs> I mean, some of my pictures are already on, on Twitter because uh, I took pictures of the – Talking Feds episode 18 that we recorded in, in L.A., and those are already on Twitter. I see way more photography from Mark than I do on on this avid photography uh, hobbyist, Amos. Um, yeah, I like your photography, Mark. Keep it up. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Part part of the reason is that the vast majority of the pictures that I take are my kids, and I don't like putting that out there on the interwebs too much. Mm. That's valid. So. That's valid. Um, you could Mark, take a picture of your dog taking a shit and post it. I would, but every time I pull on my camera, he's like, "Oh my god, you're you're gonna do something cool!" And he comes running towards me, and I'm like, "I don't need you running towards me with fucking shit dangling behind your balls." <laughs> <laughs> By the way, our chat room is keeping track of how many times we say shit during this episode. Yes. And uh, so like, each time we say shit, another like shit is added to the shit counter. So yep. it's currently uh, 11, but that's only primary shits. That's not secondary shits. Yeah. It, uh, the shit doesn't count if your shit talks to my shit and, you know, Kent's son still getting laid more than he is. So that's a whole different story. <laughs> oh, callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so Mark, I was talking about your, your, I was complimenting you on your photography. I really like the, the weather photos that you take. And I think you've got a good eye for weather because you are a meteorologist. Could you remind us your, just a brief bio, I guess, of your, um, your history with meteorology and kind of what you're doing these days that's meteorologically related Especially well, no, I'm the a cosmic yeah, 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 so it's a whole yes, different. Yes, my bad. Cosmic, yeah, that word. So my history, I'm a meteorologist. Oh, you probably want me to say more than that. Yeah, you know, actually, meteorology was a second career. So I started out. Um, my early career, I guess, was more in IT and business side of things. But I went back to get a master's degree in atmospheric science in. 2007, I think, is when I graduated. And most of my meteorolo meteorology work is really things that people don't think about. So I spent a lot of times behind the scenes working more with kind of uh, developing systems and working with the data, doing some forecasting. But a lot of my initial work was in, oh, Amos is taking our picture. Um it, working with doing forecasting for tropical cyclones. So I did a lot of work with tropical cyclones. Um, but, you know, a lot of things really just on um, looking at different aspects of weather forecasting and bringing it to people to use that sort of data and make this doing more of the decision making. So not so much when you think about getting a weather forecast when you're like, oh, is it going to rain today? Do I need to bring an umbrella? But maybe working with people in the energy industry or the insurance industry or whatever it might be, um, taking that weather data and integrating it into their decision making processes. So a lot more on the system side. Um, again, sort of leveraging what I did before I became a meteorologist. So it's, it's a lot of things people don't think about, but it's really where weather is going to be in the future. So you think about IBM getting in and buying, um, you know, the, what was the weather channel and that sort of thing. And it's bringing it into to their Watson group. And that's really where, uh, the process is going is people are looking to finally take what is becoming better and better weather forecast or weather information and integrate it into their decision-making process. So that's kind of the future of weather forecasting. Mm. Okay. Um, you also uh, you also taught college, right? You're a professor? I, I did do that for a year. Um, I was asked by my alma mater, Georgia Tech, to help them as they were uh, transitioning through some, some different staff changes. And I went back and was able to teach a couple of classes that 
you know, I was uh, lucky to push through and survive um, and, and went back in 2017 and um, had the privilege of doing that. That was kind of fun. Um, it wasn't something that, uh, you know, had been on my radar screen for a long time. Um, <laughs> but, radar you know, it, it it's, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things you realize how much you do or don't know when you have to teach someone else what they need to know about it. So um, it, it's kind of a fun opportunity to go back and and make sure that you know enough to uh, enlighten the future generations, if you will. Uh, that reminds me. One of my favorite quotes is, "If you don't, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough." And it's been attributed to like Albert Einstein, but I'm sure it's been reattributed to five billion people. And it's probably something some old dude said in like 2012. But um, I really like that. And and the fact that you can that you take the time to teach and that you were capable enough to teach me teaching, I really I think that is like. When people talk about, oh, I'm do I do I do this and I do that, but yeah, but are you can you teach it? Because if you can't teach it, then in my mind you don't understand it well enough for us to really have a strong conversation about it. Yeah, I, there's some truth in that. I mean, you know, there's the other side of that that people always say that the people that can't do it teach, um, but I, I don't really find that's true. I, you know, mm. may, maybe bad teachers are that way, but if if you find a teacher and you really learn something from them, generally that means that they've got a pretty good command of whatever it is they're trying to convey to you. And, and yeah, it's, um, you know, for the most part teaching, no matter where it is, whether it's at a, at an elementary school or a university teaching, doesn't pay a lot. I, I don't care what the university is, the actual teaching process, people that do research and that kind of stuff at universities can make, make a good living, but the actual teaching, it, it doesn't pay. Um, and you got to do it for the love of it. And, and quite frankly, like I said, it was an honor. It was an honor to be, you know, asked to even do it. Um, and it was something that, that I really enjoyed doing because you do, you, you kind of get a shape future minds and, and how they're thinking about the topic that, you know, is usually something that you're passionate about. So it was, was, uh, an interesting opportunity. Yeah. Uh, we, we do have a, a listener question for you. Uh, we got it from our Discord, um, which if anyone wants to give us topic suggestions or add, just add to the conversation in it, in any way, um, you can head over to bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Uh, join our conversation. You get the opportunity to ask questions to our future guests because we will be uh, requesting uh, things like that for I think from here on out, whenever we have guests on, uh, but this one is from B. Coford. Mark, uh, which weather prediction model do you think works best? Well, mine, of course. Um, no, I, I think they're in the general sense. They're probably referring to there's this always ongoing debate: is is the U.S. model or the European model the best? Um, and, and again, you know, I mentioned IBM and some of the other private companies, Panasonic has developed their own model. So we are seeing more models, but the great debate is always the, the, the U S versus the European. And my personal opinion is the European model is better. So there's the short answer. Well, okay. why though? Like, is it, is it just different maths or are they using a, a different basis for uh, measurement or like, you know, why is there such a difference between the models? So th- the reality is there's not that big of a difference. If you had asked me 10 years ago, I think there was more of a difference. And, you know, when you think about the models themselves, there's certainly the physics that define the model, you know, what kind of computing power you have. But the the ECMWF, as it is known, or the European model, has consistently done a better job of working with the data integration process. So having good data sources to feed the model, because that's actually is important as the physics in the model is what kind of data is going in to create the future forecast. And they've got a rich history of doing that very well. And the U S is just still kind of playing catch up in that, um, that area. And in my humble opinion, of course. Hmm. All right. Um, I thought you, I thought you had to follow on Kent. I was like waiting for you to, you, you seemed like you had something else to add to that. Yeah, I was actually well. I was I was hoping to have a good transition point, and I didn't. I don't have a a, a good enough lead in to uh, to. Do you have anything other uh, weather related or meteorology related questions for Mark Amos? 
Um, what weather do you prefer, the weather in Chile or the weather in Atlanta? And, wow, and, and, good and question. I ask I, that I on two both. aspects. One, uh, yep. the weather that you enjoy experiencing more and the weather you enjoy photographing more. So photographing probably Atlanta in terms of, of actual weather. The weather in Chile, at least the part that I'm in, in Santiago, um, or generally speaking, it is not very, it, you would say, dynamic. So it, it's kind of sort of ho-hum. Um, you get some good snow, so after it's already happened. But in terms of ongoing weather, it's pretty boring. Um, so photography-wise, hands down, Atlanta is is a better option. In terms of the weather itself, anywhere where I don't have to be where the temperature is above 80 degrees. <laughs> so yep. I, right now it's perfect. So I'm in I'm in Santiago. It's the winter time. I'm loving it. Fall is my favorite season from a like being outside and enjoying it. But I love the snow. So like I lived in Syracuse, New York, where you know they get a lot of lake effect snow, and it was just awesome. So I mm. I like living in places that get a lot of snow. Yeah, same here. Mm. I, Yep, it, it, not was, me. it was 73 degrees outside today and I had my air conditioning on because it was just, it was too hot. <laughs> too hot. I needed 73 50. degrees need is like ease. perfect for me. Oh my God, 73. No, no, I needed like 55, 58. That's really, and, and let's really keep nice. in mind, this is why Kent has warm beer in his <laughs> garage. Right. Yep. I, yep. That's Kent, that's, maybe you that's should okay. move to the UK and drink warm beer all the time. Yeah, you go, yeah, go. yeah, that's actually a myth. The the beers in Europe, uh, to include UK, are not warm. They're just not ice fucking cold. Like you have to have a Bud Light or something like that at to be even. Right, they're room temperature. It's raining all the time there. It's just colder. It's not even room temperature. It's like it's like forty eight degrees as opposed to like the thirty four degrees that you have to drink a Bud Light at. So Kent's in denial as usual. <laughs> and, and Kent just admitted he was in Europe drinking Bud Light, which is just uh, that's just wrong. No, you didn't. Nope, that's you didn't follow what I was saying there. But that's okay. Uh, I I do want to I, I do want to change gears here a little bit. Um, Mark, you mentioned that you lost your wife recently, um, and once again, uh, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, I'm interested though, because I've, I've, I've had loss. I haven't dealt with the, the loss of a spouse, but I've lost, uh, both my parents, uh, several uh, close family members to me. And so I'm always interested in that aspect of the human experience. And I'm just curious, uh, what have you learned from this experience? Anything that, that you think would be, uh, I don't, it doesn't have to be profound, just something that you didn't know before this happened that could be worthwhile information to other fellow humans? Yeah, I, you know, that's a, I, wow, it's a loaded question. I mean, we could probably go on for um, the next hundred rich episodes uh, covering the topics. I, I think there's a lot of things you learn in the process. Um, and uh, you know, I, I kind of put in the show notes there. One of the things I'm going to actually try to do is, is, I don't know, document some of this. Um, it's, it's a, it's a humbling experience. Um, but you also, you know, you see, th there's no doubt that there's a lot of darkness, a lot of, um, difficult times, a lot of challenging times, but you also have an opportunity to see incredible kindness in people. Um, and, you know, the, the thing that has been resonating with me recently is just the incredible strength you recognize in people. Um, you know, my wife of, of the two of us, she was the oldest child uh, and she was always the one that was what I would call the strong person of us. I'm the wimpy, emotional type. And she was kind of the strong rock in our relationship. Um, but that is just dwarfed by what you see when you witness somebody dealing with a situation that involves life and death and um, the incredible strength that people demonstrate when they are going through a process where, you know, the choice is, you know, you, you do these things and, you know, cancer is, it's one of those things where the treatments are just as difficult as the disease. And, um, 
the choice is you either do these treatments or you're going to die and you do the treatments and you may still die anyways is, is what happened with my wife. But, um, what you put your body through and your mind through and, and your spirit through going through that process and to do it day in and day out. Um, you know, I, made the decision as we started with this process to become a full-time caregiver. So I, I was very focused on, um, not meteorology actually for a little while. And, um, you know, it's the lessons you learn in watching someone go through the process, um, of potentially, you know, not being around anymore teaches you a lot about what the human body uh, and the human mind can go through and still come out the other side. It, it's, you know, the people face difficulties all the time. And you guys know this with what you do with your New Year's Eve stuff where you're trying to not leave people alone. Um, you've been in the military and certainly there's a lot of people that serve that come back and are never the same. And every day they have to get up and, and deal with that. But when it's a situation of life or death, um, you, you know, there is no tomorrow sometimes. And you recognize what we can come out the other side through. And it's the only way, you know, that I go on day after day is that I have that person to look back on both before they were sick um, and through the illness itself and recognize that, um, you know, what she's given me is the ability to get up tomorrow and know that I'm going to be able to whatever comes up to be able to push through. And I, you know, if, if there were one thing, that's probably the thing that, uh, is most, um, I feel most honored for having that in my life is that, that I can look at that situation and know that tomorrow, no matter what it is, no matter what I'm dealing with, that I will be able, uh, to, to push on through to the day after. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. But like I said, I, I guess what I'm hoping to do through all this is, um, maybe take some of what we've been through. My wife was very private throughout this process. And so not a lot of people knew about what was going on. And it, you know, it made it a little tricky for me because I kind of had to go dark on social media and some other places because I you know, wasn't able to easily talk about what was going on. But one of the things we recognized is we wanted to help people. Uh, and we did that, you know, as we were going through the process and hopefully now what I've been through and what we went through can maybe in some way help someone else get through it. So I, I'm hoping to try to figure out a way uh, to make that feasible using, you know, my pop podcast background um, and, and other communication methods as well, social media and other things to, to bring that to other people and maybe share some of the story in a way that it helps people um, recognize that there is another tomorrow and they'll, they'll get through it the best they can. Yeah. Wow. That great answer to that question. <laughs> um, no, thank you for sharing that. That's um, I, and I definitely think that's important. We were talking about teaching uh, earlier and how important that is to, you know, take your knowledge and pass it on. And this is certainly no different um, experiences that we go through that are incredibly difficult and, and um, you know, situations where you just don't know how you're going to get through it. It's, oftentimes very important to hear from someone who has been through it before and just get that reassurance that, that, yeah, there is another side. There is, you know, getting through to the other side, there is another side, right. And it's possible to get through it because if I can do it, you absolutely can, you know, um, there's always that side of the story that I think needs to be told. And I think that's awesome. If you, if you find a way to get that, that message out there. I, I would, I would absolutely listen to that. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt. Um, yeah. is it, so are, are you, are you thinking of, of turning that into, uh, an, like a recurring series type of, of podcast, like kind of how you had, what is it about the weather or, yeah, I hope so. I, I, it's funny, you know, we, we all here listen and know, uh, Justin Robert Young, and one of the things, actually, it was one of his podcasts, and I and I told him this actually after she passed away. Um, yeah, he did his alone week. It was really weird. So he did that week where he was doing his his podcast where he's alone. And the first day happened to be right after I'd sent him an email letting him know that that my wife has had been unsuccessful in uh, uh, living up to his. Um, not die command, uh, oh, that he right. always passes on at the, at the end of, of the jury daily show. But, you know, he was doing an episode and, and he was one of the few places I could find humor 
as I was going throughout this process. He kind of helped me stay grounded and uh, kind of pushing through and, and could help me find a smile on days when I didn't think I was going to be able to find a smile. And one time he was talking about people on Twitch and he was saying, you know, that there's all these people out there that are l broadcasting to literally nobody. And that kind of phrase stuck with me. And so I've come up with a sort of modified version of that called literally nadie. And nadie means nobody in Spanish. There's my uh, uh, Spanglish version of, of what I'm going to come up with. And it's because, you know, you can find those domains and they're not already taken. Right. Um, no, no one's speaking Spanglish and registering the dot com on that. But it, it reminded me that that that's kind of what I want to do is, is share the story. Um, and yeah, I hope it reaches somebody and I hope somebody gets something out of it. But part of it is, you know, the therapy for me is trying to tell the story and share the things, uh, the life experiences that I think were critical, both, uh, the time I was dealing with the illness, but also what I'm going to be like this other side. And so it's a, it's a combination of things. And so I did my first Twitch stream. I'm still figuring out the chaos that is Twitch, um, which uh, I don't know how anybody puts up when with you that. So it out, a, let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that, that, that makes, you know, we'll, we'll all feel better for that because they're, you know, they, they've kind of accepted us podcasters kind of going on their uh, platform, although clearly they're not geared towards us. So I've put a single episode out there um, where I just kind of talk about why I'm even going to be doing this. But I, you know, I hope it's more than I want it to be a podcast. I would like to do a podcast component, but I'm hoping it is other things. I'm hoping it is photography or, you know, whether it's blog or whether it's other things, I don't know. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but it will be something and a podcast will be a component of that because, uh, you know, that's something I really enjoy doing and I miss doing. And, you know, going dark with the podcast was part of that. I, I just kind of didn't feel right uh, and feel creative anymore from a, the podcast that I was doing because literally the last episode was running on a week when we were out at MD Anderson in Houston. And, you know, here, here I was trying, we were trying to get my wife the best help we could get her. And, um, you know, the, the last episode of, of what is it about the weather was running and it just, you know, it was time, it was time to put that down for a little while. And I may come back to it in another, when it looks a different way or something like that. But for now, I think telling the story and, and again, hopefully making, um, what I've been through and what we went through together, um, something that can help some others going through that same difficult process. Uh, <clears throat> my wife and I consider c constantly talk about doing a podcast together where we just talk about our family life because we live in a circus. Like we, our life is just constantly goddamn crazy. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that we are, well, we don't want to do it because that's a commitment and that's just one more thing we have to do. And we don't want to overshare, but we want to do it because it's, we feel that a lot of other couples go through the same problems and same triumphs that we go through and don't have an avenue to know that other company couples are going through it. And so that's always something that sits on our, on our mind in the back of our mind. And this kind of seems to run along that same course in my mind is that, Hey, here's, someone who, who, who lost the possibly, probably, maybe some people, not so much, the most important person to them. And that experience does change you. You know, if you've never known anyone that's lost a spouse or been really close to their mom and, you know, their mom dies or whatever else, like you, you know that that process, especially if it's if it takes time, is a changing experience, and I would say probably even more so when it's when it takes time, when it's not a sudden thing. Um, mm. So I I would welcome you to share that. Of course, you know that's I don't want to ever pressure any, anybody into something uncomfortable, but um, I would I would definitely tune in tune in, and I think a large part of Diamond Club and our audience here would do so as well. Because we've all had that. We're all, we've all experienced some sort of tragedy and loss. And, and it's always comforting to know that you're not the only person to have gone through it. And other people have had the same thoughts and the same thought processes that you have. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, it's, it's one of those things. And I, I relate this kind of in the, the recording that's up on Twitch right now. So, you know, when you, 
my wife and I were married for almost 30 years and had dated for another four on top of that. And this was the person that I chose, you know, it wasn't somebody that this family or that sort of thing. So this was the person that I chose and she chose me. And that doesn't mean that, you know, over the, all those years that it was always easy or always, you know, laughs and giggles all the time. But when it's the person that you're comfortable kind of just being in the room in complete silence, you know, and, and, and they're there and you're there and you're just comfortable with one another or you want to gravitate to where they are, even if you're doing different things, um, you know, they may be doing work and you may be doing your own work, but sometimes just being in the same room is enough, uh, to lose that person. Um, you know, it was interesting. We, we always thought her, her grandmother, uh, will turn 103 years old this year. So we always thought that if anybody was going to go, I was going to be the one that was going to go first. Um, I, you know, it, that, that was just the way it was going to be. And, and so for this to happen, um, you know, I, I had to wake up one day and go, I'm, I'm 51 and I'm alone. You know, I, it, it's not that I don't have great family and friends to support me, but it's not the same as having that person around. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what the future holds for me, but you don't replace that person. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going to spend the rest of my life alone, but, um, that part of my life has changed me forever. And I actually put a, a post up on Instagram. I came home at the place I'm staying and, you know, the, the way they make up the room here, it's like, I'm in an apart hotel as they call it. But the, the blind, the shear was drawn and the, the other curtain was open and it was kind of nighttime and I could look outside. And the best way I know to describe it to your point about change is, you know, I'm looking through that shear and I, I see everything and I hear everything and I feel everything, but you don't feel it the same way fully and it's never the same. So whatever I become, it will never be the same that I was going into it. And, and that doesn't mean that there can't be good that comes out of it. And to your point is, um, I, I hope in some way going through it and, and sharing that process with others will both help me and help others as they go through similar circumstances. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I want to extend a, a standing invitation to you actually, if you decide uh, that you want to uh, share some of this periodically, but not run your own show, you are more than welcome to come on to this show and uh, do this again. <laughs> like, Great. Like, we like, can like, talk about shit shows again. Like, uh, you would come back on this show after fucking up the quiz that bad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amos, this, just keep in mind, we made a D. It doesn't matter yeah. what I did or what you did. We made a D. We passed. Because right. teamwork, so a D. you got a D. Teamwork, teamwork <laughs> yeah. makes the D work. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. But actually, what what may happen? One one of the things I'm thinking about doing um, is taking some time and doing a little bit of a walkabout. So you guys may see me and not be ready for me. I may show up in Alaska one day or New Mexico one day, and you know I may be asking Kent to take me to that famous grocery store that has the best beer in town. Yes. Um, yes. And, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or I may get stuck in Anchorage in, in rush hour um, trying to get get out to the middle of nowhere. We'll see. Who, but who um, the fuck has you know, traffic? Uh, anyway, don't don't be surprised if I show up on your doorstep one day. Well, so. I, I I believe we both have guest rooms. So, yeah, I yep. mean, you can't be in Kent's guest room when he records. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or when his son we'll, is getting laid, we'll because yeah. it's either for recording or it's the spare sex room. As we've no, 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 no. His, his his son's room is uh, his son room. His son's rooms um, uh, flank either side of his recording slash guest room. So no matter which son is getting laid, if they're getting laid, they're getting <laughs> laid right next to you. <laughs> So great, I get a, it, I get to live vicariously through them yes. while I'm in the guest room. That's yes. good to know. Yeah, uh, and I mean, if you're lucky, they'll both be getting laid at the same time, uh, and Kent will be recording <laughs> while you're staying there for the night. I think Sessian's going to really love listening to this episode. Does she actually listen to the episodes, <laughs> Kent? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> she hasn't in quite a while. <laughs> she 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 has to live with them. There's no way she's going to listen to them too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't listen to me live, like literally live next to me. But oh my gosh! Um, so in the meantime, <laughs> where can people find you as you begin this roundabout or walkabout or 
round a walk? What? What walk around the roundabout? Yeah, yeah. The the, the who's a who's a who's a watcha? Um, <laughs> so you can go to Twitch and li- look up literally Nadia. So that is my username, um, and for my other. That's the other thing. How do you manage multiple Twitch things? It's what a pain in the butt that is. Oh, you, um, I, you, you're preaching to the choir on that yeah. one. So that is where things will start. And and actually, I don't have anything up on the domain, but literally Nadia.com exists, but also literally Nadia on Twitter. Um, I, I have zero followers, and uh, I've started just randomly tweeting things. But um, – that's where people can find it, and I'll start doing more now that I've been on this thing and I'll feel responsible for actually doing stuff. Um, no pressure. <laughs> no, none at all. None at all. Or or you'll find me at uh, ritualmisery.com slash literally Nadia because now Amos will be responsible for adding that uh, link to go to wherever we want it to. So um, we'll, we'll right. figure it out. But That will, um, that, that, yeah. that will so not happen uh, immediately, but it will happen, I promise. Yep. And yeah, also, it'll you, happen you by don't have time, zero followers what? on Twitter anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 2021 it'll be unslated on the schedule for 2021 um probably the next time i publish an episode which it's already ready i just haven't had a chance to actually hit the publish button so maybe tonight oh wow (laughs) right on because i'm uh late on everything that's that's what i'm that's my name i'm just gonna mr late amos late got it yeah you don't even have a profile pickup on here for literally Nadia. Nope, exactly. That's the point, right? That's I need to do some dark thing, some just uh, nothingness. I I well, say I, mean, I say you just take the little the little not person and just reverse the colors, and that becomes the because it's no one, right? Right. Yeah, Could yeah be. that's what I was gonna say. It, it very much fits the theme. <laughs> literally Nadia. Yeah, and now you have two yeah. followers, so. Okay. <laughs> You've 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 int- infinitesimally uh, increased your followership just on this twice. episode. Twice, yeah, <laughs> twice. Well, no, the second time was just well, double. Yeah, the second time wasn't. But, You're not good I mean, at math, Kent. How can people find you not good well, at math each, on Twitter? Each time it occurred, compa- as compared to where he was, is in, 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 in uh, infinite. W. Scott is one says make it three followers. So <laughs> wow. okay, it's like a trend. Just keep it going, Kent. Where can people find you on the old interwebs? Yeah, Twitter. At RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, also, like, hit me up on Untapped. I haven't had any new followers on there in a long time. Go on Untapped. I am Del Noche on there. So, like, share a beer with me. Amos? Uh, Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> I'll do it next <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, the show is at Ritual Misery on Twitter. It is, and it's also at RitualMisery.com. Hmm. Uh, we mentioned this earlier in the show, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Get in there. Join the conversation. Yep, and you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at RitualMisery.com. Yeah, we are live almost every Thursday, <laughs> round about almost 7, at 7 p.m. p.m. Pacific. West <laughs> <laughs> for the record yeah. we, we've been promising being late and or early and or non-existent for years <laughs> let's be clear sure we are early be... for next week's episode this is next week's episode we're early <laughs> right. well by the time i, I, I publish it it will be next week thursday episode. evening at 7 p.m pacific we're probably not live yet <laughs> but, we will be soon. Uh, but that is on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Yeah. And uh, of course we want to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to play his music through with several aspects of this show. Uh, we like it so much and we are working on getting people inspired or ready for uh, his, he's got a documentary. Yeah. Pay attention. Uh, thank you for listening for Kent, for Mark and for me. This has been your ritual misery podcast. See ya. Oh, shit. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. 22. Shit counters now at 22.